All right, so this is part 12 of the study, Arrival with Consequences. And in the last study, in part 11, we uh, went over some of Paul's writings and his letters to the Church of Corinth and to Timothy himself of they were to expect Christ to return in their lifetime. So in this part 12 study, we're going to go over Paul's writings in Titus and some more in Timothy and even Philippians of the expectation that Christ would return in their generation. So the Apostle Paul here, we'll start off in Titus, is writing to another gentleman, just as T Timothy was, Titus, who was familiar with Paul's doctrine. In Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13, and we'll break these down. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. So in the present age here, is Paul writing to Titus? Yes, Titus the church planner in Crete in the first century. The present age then. Paul instructs Titus that God's word instructs them then, back then in the first century, to deny ungodliness and worldly desires there back in the first century. The present age then. Paul instructs Titus that God's word instructs them then, you see. And this instruction is for the authentic believer in Christ today as well. But look here. To live righteously and godly. When? In the present age. Well, what present age? In the present age in 2022? No. Now, many today will say that, that is, today is the present age Paul was referring to, and that's a major malfunction for them. It's a timing issue for them. And this is what's called an audience relevance hermeneutic, right here. This present age, this present age that Paul is referring to here. It's the present age in the context in which we're reading this, which was then. And Paul said in Galatians, chapter 1, verse 4, that Christ gave himself for their sins, that Christ might deliver them out of the present evil age. He said that to the church in Galatia, then, the present age then, you see. So the present age the Apostle Paul was referring to and lived in was the present current evil age in the first century. We can't twist this up. And present age is a moment or a period in time that's in between what's past and what is future. So at the era in which Paul wrote was now in the present then. So back to Titus, chapter 2, in verse 12. Instructing us to die, uh, deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present evil age. Now let this present evil age flow into verse 13. And to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present evil age, looking for the blessed hope, and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, applying audience relevance and context, to whom was to be looking for this blessed hope? Look back at verse 12. Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires. Uh, Paul's writing to Titus, yes? Instructing us us, them. Now who does Paul think he's writing to? 
your church or my church in the year 2022? Instructing us. Paul's writing to Titus regarding the qualification the qualifications for an elder, instructing them to deny ungodliness and to deny, and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously and godly in that present age, looking for the blessed hope. The context here is Paul and Titus were looking for the blessed hope in the text. Not you or I. So don't accuse me of taking away your blessed hope. The words of Paul to his beloved brother Titus would be at fault for not including you in as being a recipient of this. Contextual blessed hope. So Paul and Titus, they were looking, they were looking for the blessed hope. And they were also looking for the appearing of the glory of our, which is their, great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Now hold your seat and hear me out now. Paul did indeed tell Timothy in 2 Timothy 4.1, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who was to judge the living and the dead by his appearing and his kingdom. Paul told Timothy over <coughs> 2,000 some years ago that Christ was about to appear. And as a result of Christ's appearance, there'd be judgment and kingdom. So there's no way to talk that away. It's the same thing worded differently by Paul in Titus 2.14 who gave himself for us, them, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Now don't get this twisted up here. We're going to go through this study applying audience relevance and applying context. But Christ, in fact, gave himself for all who believe, all who believe, in every single generation. Because we have other texts that clearly specify that. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. And all those types of passages. Yes, you will in the year 2022 and beyond. And every other time in human history. Yeah. He gave himself for you or gave himself for us. The us indeed means all believers. But when it comes to the second coming, as we've gone over in this text, in these ten or so parts of this study, those texts are specified, specifically dated type of texts, where certain particular things have to happen at a specific time in history in regards to that specific generation in the specific era of the first century. So I encourage y'all to keep that kind of thing in mind. Now look what Paul says here to the church in Philippi. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. The Lord is near to who? When Paul wrote to the Philippians. To them. The Lord was near to them. Paul was addressing the Thessalonians, Titus and Timothy, in a manner in which Christ was a coming. He was coming. And Paul said to the church in Philippi, the Lord is near. The Greek is the Lord is a goose. A goose means as close as your hand. And at times it was translated, the Lord is at hand, or near. A goose, it means as close as your hand. Hold your hand up. Look at it. It's pretty close, isn't it? That's how close the Lord was to His coming to them back there in the first century. As close as your hand. And that's pretty close. You know, 
And Peter said the same type of things Paul had always said under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Peter and Paul both said the same type of things that Jesus taught. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Peter 1, chapter 13. Therefore, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, the audience Peter's talking to here is in 1 Peter, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens in Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. They were the elect, scattered Jewish believers. So Peter's talking to them in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you, to them, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's true. 1 Peter 1.13 indeed states that there's a grace that comes at the revelation of Christ. But this grace, what we've gone over already in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, comfort one another with these words. Well, what words? Well, as a result of the second coming, these words are an act of grace. So we know we'll always be with the Lord. So again, 1 Peter 1.13 says, There's a grace that comes to you, to them, the ones in the diaspora, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So there's an expectation that they're going to experience in their lifetime. And again, Peter in 1 Peter, he's writing to the diaspora. Those Jews that were scattered and residing outside of their homeland of Israel. But most church pastors hoodwink their congregants that they are the you and the who in Peter's epistle. Now look here at what Peter says will be, will be revealed to them in the time of the end of that generation. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for our through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time now how do so many people think that this salvation is not now right now in the past finished work of Christ the savior of the Jesus Christ the savior of humanity but it's for later on down the road as a future hope that every single generation is in this last time here in First Peter. That salvation that Peter's referring to was written to the scattered and alienated Jews of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia way back there in the first century. You see, we'll go over in the next study some more of Peter's clear teachings that Christ was return to return in their generation. 
So that was part 12 of the study, Arrival with Consequences. Y'all take care now here. Till next time.